one moment, all is quiet in this reserve fleet berthing area. But the next... Orders flash to a nearby shipyard. Attacked by underwater atomic bomb. Prepare to handle ships for decontamination. The handling of contaminated ships requires special facilities and procedures. The vessels may be brought into a part of the shipyard known as the decontamination zone, an area fenced off where workers and activities are isolated and carefully controlled to avoid the spread of contamination. All personnel must pass through a change station before entering and leaving the decontamination zone. This control point may be a floating barge converted to a change house or a special building ashore. On entering the change station, every man is required to strip to the skin and change to special clothing and equipment for protection against getting contaminated material on his body or from getting it into his system through breathing, eating, or getting it into cuts. By wearing film badges and dosimeters, the dose a workman receives is measured and recorded. These records help guard against overexposure. This is the initial survey and boarding party, which takes along survey instruments to detect and measure radiation and determine the condition of the ship. It consists of a ship superintendent qualified to handle radiological decontamination, the pilot, monitoring teams, deckhands, and advanced planning people. Parts of the tug which may become contaminated by contact with the contaminated vessel should be adaptable to easy cleaning. Hull surfaces should be well painted and free from scale, rust, and marine growths. Hemp or jute fenders should be covered. Rubber tire fenders are easy to decontaminate. Such precautions are very important, not only for the safety of the people aboard, but also for the safety of others who work in the shipyard. As the tugs approach the contaminated ship in its berthing area, the monitors use their survey instruments to determine the radiation level. As a result of data given him by the monitors, the ship superintendent determines that the radiation level of the ship is not too high for the ship to be boarded immediately. As the tug moves up against the contaminated hull, the value of easily cleaned fenders becomes apparent. Ladders, lines, and everything else that contacts contaminated surfaces must be either easy to clean or disposable. The monitors go aboard first to determine the level of radioactivity topside. To avoid exposing its personnel unnecessarily to radiation, the tug stands off while the monitors make their survey. The monitoring teams take readings at various points topside. Readings are chalked on the surfaces as a guide to the boarding party that will follow them. The radiation readings are also reported by walkie-talkie to the ship superintendent on the lead tug who evaluates and records the readings on the ship's plans in order to give a clear picture of general radiation levels topside. Beside providing the ship superintendent with radiation readings, the monitoring teams collect samples of radioactive dirt for further study and analysis of the existing dust hazard as required by the medical department. These samples must be carefully labeled for proper identification later.
When the monitoring teams have finished their survey, the tug comes alongside to take them aboard. As they are tracking contamination from the ship, they stop on a marked area, take off their booties and gloves, and drop them in a disposable receptacle. Note the procedure. They take great care to avoid any skin contact with contaminated clothing. Clothing is checked for radioactive particles, and so is equipment. The men also take showers. Every precaution is observed to control radioactive particles and to keep them from being spread to clean areas. These precautions only begin here. After returning to the decontamination zone of the shipyard, the men will be processed through the change station. The results of the monitor's survey are reported to the command center for a decision whether to moor the ship in the yard or at a quarantine anchorage. Decontamination procedures and precautions at either site are the same. If the ship is ordered into the yard, the decontamination may be done at a pier, slip, or dry dock. Deckhands go aboard to handle the lines and prepare the ship for towing. Although a ship may become contaminated well out of range of heavy physical damage, some light structures may be affected by the blast and rendered unsalvable. As they are contaminated and will sink, it is best to dispose of them in the contaminated area before bringing the vessel into a clean shipyard. The members of the party are guided in moving about the deck by the radiation markings left by the monitors to ensure that they receive as small a dose of radiation as practicable. The advanced planning and survey party, which includes shipyard personnel, probably representatives of the reserve fleet and others, look over the ship and estimate the work to be done. Any line secured to the ship may become contaminated. As the manila or spring lay tow lines cannot be decontaminated, they must not come in contact with the ship. Wire slings at the ends prevent this. Unlike the lines, the slings can be decontaminated. The deckhands and members of the survey party return to the tug as their presence is not required on the contaminated ship. With the pilot directing the operation, the ship is towed to the shipyard decontamination zone. The dry dock, as well as the decontamination zone which surrounds it, is planned, outfitted, and operated not only to facilitate decontamination, but to avoid the spread of radioactive particles. The manila lines used here also have wire slings at their ends to prevent direct contact with the contaminated ship. Like the boarding and survey party, the docking party should wear special clothing, film badges, and dosimeters. Everything that contacts the contaminated ship should be distinctively marked and as easy to decontaminate as practicable. Yard services must be supplied temporarily. However, even portable blowers must not be operated 
until the compartments have been monitored, dust conditions evaluated, and the spaces declared safe for their use. The underwater body in the dry dock should be monitored immediately to permit calculation of acceptable work periods. Later, there will be detailed monitoring throughout the ship. Marine growths tend to hold contamination. They should not be allowed to dry out as this may make an inhalation hazard. They should be removed while wet with long handle scrapers. These growths drop into the dry dock where they are kept wet. They are then disposed of with caution and the dry dock decontaminated as necessary. When the men are ready to secure, they must pass through the change station as they leave the decontamination zone. This applies to the boarding and survey party, the docking gang, and everybody else in the zone. In the change station, the men take off their special clothing and leave it, as well as their decontamination equipment. They wash themselves thoroughly with soap and water to remove any radioactive particles which may have gotten through the special clothing. Glasses are the only personal articles which men are allowed to take through the change station. Then they must be checked and passed by the monitor to make sure they are free of radioactive particles before they are allowed to pass into the clean area of the change station to put on their regular clothes. The change station procedures are a rigid safeguard to prevent decontamination workers from carrying away radioactive particles. In summary, the initial survey and boarding party must be equipped with special clothing and gear as well as survey instruments. All equipment which comes in contact with the ship should be distinctively marked and as easy to decontaminate as practicable. All shipyard facilities and equipment contacting the contaminated ship should be distinctively marked and easy to decontaminate. Remember, we can't see radiation, feel it, or hear it. We can detect it and measure it. And what's more important, we can work with it without risk if we use our heads and follow the prescribed procedures.